Hi everyone, this is Yana Smakula for SimonSysTM.com and thank you for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create simple stamped Christmas cards. These are great if you need to make a lot of cards quickly and don't have a lot of supplies. These are also non-bulky, so they shouldn't require any extra postage to mail them. I'm going to be using these two stamp sets today. I have the poinsettia stamp and the believe stamp set. And I'll also be using Diagonal Stripes Background Cling Stamp from Simon. For my ink colors, I have Lipstick Red and Green Apple, along with several shades of gray. And I have Stone, Fog, Barely Beige Color, and also Cobblestone. I'm going to be using my Misty Stamp Positioner today to do all of my stamping. I have several panels of white cardstock cut to 4 by 5 and a quarter inches and I'm going to begin by stamping the large believe word and a smaller sentiment that reads in the magic of Christmas and I'm trying to position them so that I have the sentiment in the middle of my panels. I'm going to be using shades of gray ink to do my sentiment stamping and I'll use a different color for each of my panels. I'm starting with barely beige and I'm inking and stamping my image three times to make sure I get a perfect impression. This is a very beautiful ink color and I can see myself using it often for background stamping, shadow stamping and such. For all my next panels, I used other shades of gray and stamped my sentiments in fog, stone and also cobblestone colors of ink. Next I picked two leaves, two solid leaves from the poinsettia stamp set and I mounted those next to the stamped sentiment. There are solid and outlined leaf images in that stamp set so you could stamp both of them, say have a black outline and a green solid color for the inside of the leaf. You could also just stamp the outline and color the leaf using whatever coloring medium you like. Or do like I'm doing here and stamp just the solid part of the leaf using green ink. And here I'm using green apple for these. By using my mini Misty, I can be sure I'm stamping those in the same spot and I don't have to spend time aligning the images so that my stamping process goes rather quickly. At this point, my sentiment panels are done and I can set them aside and work on my background panels. I'm going for a traditional Christmas airmail stripe look, so I'm going to use the diagonal stripe background cling stamp from Simon and I'm going to go ahead and stamp it onto four and a quarter by five and a half inch white cardstock panels. When I filmed this video, I didn't yet have my bigger size Misty stamp positioner, so I stamped those by placing the stamp upside down onto my work surface. I inked it up, I added my white cardstock panel on top, I placed a piece of paper over it, and I pressed down with my fingers to transfer the ink. Using a stamp positioner makes it much easier to stamp a background like this one. You can align it better, you can double stamp it. But if you don't have a stamp positioner, you can still use those large background stamps and stamp like I just showed you here. And in case you're wondering, since this is such a large stamp, placing cardstock panel over the stamp is easier rather than picking up the stamp and placing it over the paper. If you do the latter, you need to have a clear block that is the size of the stamp, so 6 by 6 inches. It is rather difficult to hold a clear block of that size and I honestly always find myself dropping them and messing up my stamping. So placing the paper onto the stamp makes more sense and is easier in terms of stamping. I'm not sure if you noticed, but I messed up my white cardstock panels. I had them pre-cut to 4 by 5 and a quarter and to 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half inches. And I was planning to use smaller size for the sentiments and bigger panels for the background, but I messed up about half of them in terms of size so I used smaller panels for the backgrounds and bigger panels for the sentiments. So I had to go back and re-stamp them to be able to complete my cards. I still have the smaller diagonal stripe panels and I'll keep them for another project. Maybe I'll die cut something out of them, but I do plan to use them somehow for my cards. And the sentiment panels, I didn't have to redo those, I just trimmed them down to the proper size. By the way, you can also stamp the airmail stripe background stamp directly onto the card base and use last cardstock. But I didn't mind stamping it onto a panel and then adding that panel onto a card base. And if you go with this method, you can have a colored card base, so maybe a bright red or a nice holiday green color. I foam mounted all of my sentiment panels onto my red diagonal backgrounds and I adhered them onto A2 top holding landscape cards. To somehow embellish these, I used enamel dots and sequins in red and I adhered them in groups of three to look like berries on my cards. I also added a small bow to each of my cards. 
The bows were made out of natural twine and I adhered them down using glossy accents glue. Normally I would use multi-medium adhesive in matte finish, but I couldn't find it on my desk so I carefully used glossy accents instead. Here's a closer look at these simple stamped holiday cards. I hope you like them and will give this idea a try. These are really super easy to make. You can find the list of supplies I used for this project down below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet done so. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye!